Those who say that reboots can't improve upon a franchise haven't been watching these sci-fi epics. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 facts about the Planet of the Apes reboot series. Have you come to save your apes? I came for you. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at interesting trivia regarding the new and successful Planet of the Apes franchise, which serves as both a prequel series and reboot to the classic films from the 60s and 70s. Who says so? Don't they tell you anything? Number 10, Pet Sounds. Although the previous film series used the now iconic ape makeup, which earned John Chambers an honorary Oscar, we can all agree that for the reboots, makeup would not cut it. The 21st century series therefore took advantage of the insane technological advancements available today, and employed revolutionary motion capture techniques to bring the ape uprising to life. While we know that Caesar, Koba, and their crew are CGI, audiences may not realize how they're given a voice. Most of the grunts, growls, and snarls you hear were recorded at Chimp Haven, a chimpanzee sanctuary. Those sounds were then mixed together with vocalizations by talented actors like Andy Serkis, resulting in eight voices that were both emotive and animalistic. I fight only to protect apes. Number 9. Gaming Apes Hollywood is no stranger to tie-in merchandise for major studio productions and blockbusters. Lucky for all you gamers out there, renowned motion capture artist and actor Andy Serkis let it slip at New York Comic Con in October 2016 that there was supposed to be a video game to accompany the third film in the franchise, War for the Planet of the Apes. It's not like a first-person shooter, it's, um, it's very much a, 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 it feels like an interactive movie. As Serkis explained it, he was recording motion capture segments specifically for the game, which would feel like an interactive movie. But sadly, while he'd mentioned the game would be released around the same time as the summer 2017 blockbuster, there'd be no word on the subject by the time the film hit theaters. Number 8. The Return of the Simian Flu ALZ-112. A gene therapy that allows the brain to create its own cells in order to repair itself. The simian flu gave apes their intelligence and almost wiped out the human race. As seen in the first film, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the ALZ drug it resulted from was originally developed to combat Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, things went south very quickly, and now we have apes on horseback with machine guns. The producers told IGN that in the third film, the virus has mutated and will be making a big comeback. They didn't reveal much. However, they did explain that the flu continued to affect both humans and apes in various ways, now 12 years after the initial outbreak. Human gets sick, ape. Get smart. Number 7. Epic Scope We are not savages. Apes fight only to survive. Director Matt Reeves had epic plans for the third film in the new Apes franchise. Taking a cue from Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight, Reeves decided to shoot the War for the Planet of the Apes in 65mm. According to Reeves' team, the idea was to give the film the grandiose and sweeping scope of epic westerns or historical dramas, a huge inspiration being David Lean's Lawrence of Arabia. This style would be required to correctly capture the desolate and breathtaking landscapes of the film, as well as the huge battle sequences we should be expecting. There are times when it is necessary to abandon our humanity, to save humanity. Number 6. Alpha Omega You know what this looks like? A bomb shelter, maybe a couple hundred years old. The original series included five feature films and two short-lived TV series. And, of course, the filmmakers behind the new franchise are fans. This can be seen in many homages and Easter eggs, most notably in certain character names. A great example in War for the Planet of the Apes is the name given to the human rebel group, Alpha Omega. Big Ape fans will recognize this as the name of the bomb that's worshipped by the underground mutants in the original sequel, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Glory be to the bomb and to the holy fallout as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. It's an especially fitting name for this group of humans, as Alpha and Omega represent the beginning and the end, and these humans think they represent that for the human race. A doomsday bomb. Oh God. What a lovely souvenir from the 20th century. Number 5. Unique Marketing Campaigns Shooting for the latest entry began in late 2015 with an expected summer 2016 release. However, the release date was pushed back a year to summer 2017. With three years between releases, a franchise needs to keep its fanbase engaged. 
Viral marketing was employed for the first films of the series. Fake public service announcements were released, as were videos of apes doing remarkable things, like the now infamous clip of the monkey taking control of a machine gun. For War for the Planet of the Apes, however, filmmakers announced a contest, allowing fans to don motion capture suits on set and join the uprising themselves. No mercy, no peace. This is war. Number four, Koba's Origins. Koba. Hi, I'm Will. One of the reboot series' most interesting characters is the cruelly treated Koba. His inclusion shows a contrasting perspective on the human ape relationship to Caesar's, who grew up in a loving human home. Caesar, love. Humans. Koba's scheming and manipulating is on full display in the second film, where he tries his best to get the apes to adopt his hatred and fear of humans, and to attack them. Not by accident, Koba was named after political theorist and communist revolutionary Joseph Stalin, who adopted the nickname Koba from one of his favorite books, The Patricide. The character of Koba in the book is a bandit who, appropriately, believes in vengeance, fights for the poor, and shows contempt for authority. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, it's not over yet. Apes, apes, together, together, strong, strong. As early as October 2016, almost a year before we would be able to see the third film in the franchise, it was confirmed that a fourth film was already being developed. It seems that the success of the series had the studio and production team confident enough to already begin thinking about what the next film would be. Director Matt Reeves and producer Dylan Clark confirmed with Slash Film during an interview that they already had some concrete ideas about where the story will go following War for the Planet of the Apes, hinting that Caesar has a lot of character development ahead of him. I came for you. Number two. In fact, there's no end in sight. Caesar is home. When Rise of the Planet of the Apes was announced, audiences were a bit skeptical. Not only is the common belief that classics should not be messed with, but the 2001 Tim Burton remake garnered a lot of negative criticism. Never send a monkey to do a man's job. Therefore, the huge critical and box office success of Rise was a welcome surprise, as was the above average sequel a few years later. When the third movie was announced, the production team stressed that this will not be a trilogy. Although the idea is to eventually link the prequel series to the original 1968 film, producer Dylan Clark confirmed with Den of Geek that they still have many stories to tell. Apes. Together, strong. Number one, Rise of the Apocalypse. Bad ape. Bad ape. According to the team behind War for the Planet of the Apes, including Andy Serkis himself, we can expect quite a brutal film with some cataclysmic events plaguing Serkis's Caesar. As the title implies, we are moving away from the rebellions and closer to all-out war. Therefore, with the plot mapped out, it seems like the classic war film Apocalypse Now was a major influence on the themes and styles of this summer blockbuster. Horror and moral terror are your friends. As producer Dylan Clark has explained, the insane Colonel Kurtz, played by Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now, was a direct influence on Woody Harrelson's military leader of the human faction. With the Colonel on one side and Caesar on the other, this should be quite the war. We will bring an end to their kind. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.